nation with no building. Years go by. They got the money to build it, but the attack stopped them from building the dream. Weeds have grown up. Animals are lodging. Boards are broken. Foundation is all messed up. What did you go through, Lighthouse? It made you stop dreaming. What hit you that made you quit? What was it that put your giant under anesthesia? What was it that told you you can't do it? Let me tell you something. I have learned how to take, first of all, I am a sum total of my failures, not my successes. I've had more failures than I've ever had successes. Anybody that's successful that tells you anything different is lying. It's your ability to run through the walls of unsuccess and shake the dust off. Pick yourself back up and keep moving. It's, it, see, you got to understand, there's sometimes you got to go through those periods because there's people connected to you. <laughs> You'll find out who your real friends are when all hell breaks loose in your life. What has stopped you from building what God put in your spirit? What has, you see, life has a way of hitting you so hard it'll knock the dream out of you. Now watch this, watch this now. So it's laying dormant, weeds have grown up, and God stirs up the prophet Zechariah. And he's sick and tired of walking past an uncompleted temple. And he makes a statement. He said, is there anybody else in Israel that's sick and tired of small. Is there anybody else around here that's so tired of seeing a foundation with no building? And he asked the question. He said, who hath despised the day of small things? I'm asking you a question. Are you sick of being small? Who is in here right now that's tired of an uncompleted dream? And he answers the question, and he says, number one, and these are not points because I'm about to close. He said, number one, they shall rejoice. <laughs> the first thing that happens when you get sick of being small, look, look, this is what I want you to do. Today, I just want you to make up in your mind because change starts the moment you make a decision. Make up in your mind that today, as soon as you leave church, you're going to do one thing that draws you closer to what God put in your spirit. Take action today. Whatever it is, make the phone call, write the email, write the letter, get in somebody's face, go to their house, tell them, say, I know it's Sunday, but I got to tell you something because I'm not wasting another day. Right now, I'm going to get what God has for me. Watch this. He says he will rejoice whenever your dream starts to come alive. Woo! No matter what you're going through, when you say, I'm sick and tired of what's going on, and you realize that you have the power on the inside to change. Yo, I'm about to preach how to lose my mind in here. When you come to that place, the first thing that happens is joy comes back to your life. You may not have two nickels to rub together. You may not have a friend that can get your back. But when your sleeping giant starts to... You already know it's on. Tell your neighbor, say it's on, it's on, it's on. Oh, you messed, you should have left him sleep. You should have left him asleep, but he's waking up now and I'm getting ready to take the world with what God has put in my spirit. This word rejoice, and I got to hurry now because I'm going to close, is a Hebrew word that means to praise arrogantly. Woo, you can't say this in every church. It means to rejoice with arrogance. Salmach in the Hebrew. Arrogant derives from the Latin word arrogote, which means to claim. Which simply means, in our vernacular, arrogance seems bad. But in the Hebrew and Latin, it means to state claim to what you know is already yours. 
which means they ain't built the temple yet, but there were some folks that said, you know what, we're tired of being small, and we're getting ready to go to work, and joy hit them. And when it did, they started walking around like they already had it. They started talking like they already have it. It ain't built yet, but they started dancing like they already have it. They started driving like they already have it. They started enjoying life like they already had it. Slap your neighbor a high five and tell them, say, neighbor, I'm about to give God an arrogant praise. An arrogant praise is prophetic. You know I'm broke. But I got a prophetic praise. 